Hey everyone, uh, welcome to one of my labs. Um, this one's going to be on Windows Server 2008 Release 2, Network Load Balancing. The idea here is that we've um, set up our virtualized infrastructure and it looks... Let's pretend it looks something like this, so we're all nice and tidy with our folders. Um, and we've got a two host cluster here. Um, the idea is, is that we want to deploy a highly available um, IS7 website um, and we're going to do that with network load balancing. We're going to set up, well actually I've already set up two Windows Server 2008 uh, machines and if I pop down into here you can see there there's machine one and there's machine two. Um, in terms of networking setup, they both have a just one network card. Um, there's no clustered interfaces here. There's um, normally with um, traditional uh, Windows clustering, you have a third NIC running in between them, but here we don't. We just have one. Um, now um, this network here is completely isolated. I only have uh, three machines on it which is one, two and then on my local machine I'm running um, Windows um, sorry VMware Workstation 7 um, and that has a, an adapter that is essentially representing this machine here. So this machine here is being virtualized by um, VMware Workstation um, that's being done because all of these devices are on VLAN 500. Um, my local machine has got, I'll just show you this quickly. If I pop into my local machine and have a look at network settings, you'll see that here I have uh, an interface that's site to site LAN and on this port here which I've called Intel Trunk you'll see I then there have a VLAN name that's ID500 if I have a look under Network Editor you'll see that VMNet3 is bound to just waiting for that to change the site to site VLAN and then this here is bound to VMNet3 which essentially means I have that IP address and if I jump into the console of one of the machines here means I can ping 192.168.100. That's node 1 and that's node 2. So even though I'm running in here in VMware Workstation, um, it, it essentially, through virtualizing in VMware Workstation and virtualizing within vSphere here, I've essentially set up this network. Okay, um, let's set up a ping. This is going to be pinging my um, the clustered IP of the two nodes, this IP here, that's going to be shared amongst the two. Obviously it's not returning anything because it hasn't been set up yet, so let's go ahead and do it. So that's the, uh, we don't need this anymore yet, I don't think. This is node 1, let me bring up a console on node 2. That's node 2. Uh, let's jump into server manager on each node. First thing we're going to do is we need to add a feature. The feature that we're adding is called network load balancing. Add a feature, network load balancing. See the other nodes already done now. 
close that. Okay, now if we have a look under control panel and administrative tools, second node is done. Let's close that down. We should see one here called Network Load Balancer Manager, Balancing Manager even. First thing you want to do, we want to do a new cluster and you specify the host name of the first node which in my example is going to be this That's what we want to do here you've got the priority of the host it's automatically set to 1 because this is a new cluster so is the first node next now here's the cluster IP address, so this is where we specify 192.168.100.100 auto fills the subnet mask I'm intentionally leaving this blank um, the reason for that is I don't have any DNS services available but if you did you'd put the fully qualified domain name in there Unicast and multicast is important and I'll tell you about that later um, essentially um, multicast is easier to set up in a virtualized environment but uh, some switches and routers have problems with it um, unicast is completely invisible to your other infrastructure equipment so is, e is easier to deploy for um, nodes that are fussy about talking to multicast MAC addresses anyway uh, 192.168.100.100 So we're now waiting for it to set up that particular IP address. And you see in the bottom right hand corner, what it does is it essentially um, binds NLB to that network card and then almost disables and re-enables the card. There we go, that's a good sign. That's the cluster IP um, now responding. Okay, next stage. What we'll do is if we select the cluster and then go host, cluster and add a host, that's the one. And what we'll do, we'll add NLB2. Now what's important here is for this to actually work, um, one of the things that you need is your credentials that you're using on this machine need to work on this machine as well which either means domain uh, each computer is a member of a domain you've got administrative credentials throughout the domain or um, like we set up here the user ID and password I'm using here is exactly the same as the one that I'm using over here with a bit of luck in a second what we'll see let me make this a little bit bigger and there we go, you can see, you just saw that down here you can see it doing the same thing, it disconnected, reconnected the uh, network card after rebind, after binding um, NLB to the interface so this is currently pending there we go, that's done the next thing we're going to do now is install IIS on both machines uh, which again we're going to do through server manager this time we're not adding a feature we're adding a role the role we're adding is a web server next install same over here Still installing at the moment, have to bear with me. I should have a do a song and a dance when it takes this long really. Let's make this window a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller even. Let's take it down to eight hundred by six hundred. Okay, installation succeeded, good and good. Okay, so believe it or not, that's pretty much it.
let's have a look at our um, client here uh, and see if our client can access the highly available website now just loading up Firefox at the moment see pings are still going through which is good okay let's okay so there's IIS that's working and we can do lots of refreshes to check that it is working those increase in ping times are probably more of an indication of this local machine struggling rather than the uh, the cluster struggling okay um, now what should we do how about we bring down host one see what impact that has so if we do a thing of test NLB that's now going down let's see what the website does okay it's still responding in terms of pings just seeing what IS does and there we go IS there was a period where it was taking a, a little bit longer but as you can see there that's responding pings actually never stopped at all those increase in ping times are before we started the reboot so that's good now the nodes back up again now let's bring down the other node see if it's just as resilient test NLB down goes the second node now let's try refreshing okay so when you bring when you sometimes bring it down you'll get the service unavailable let's keep refreshing what you'll have to see in a second is you'll see it come back so there you go the machine hasn't loaded yet but within a couple of seconds it sorted itself out and again no pings were lost okay so as you can see that's a pretty successful um, deployment we've kind of done it so now we can lose either node and there is some downtime as far as IS is concerned um, but you can always kind of scale this out and whatever so the chances of them hitting a, a bad node are, are lower and things like that um, okay let's now let's I want to go through a few things um, the first thing is is um, one of the stumbling blocks I often see is um, not setting up the security settings within the vSwitch to allow uh, unicast network load balancing to work. Um, let me just show you that here. Now I'm using distributed vSwitches here. Um, however, you'll probably see you'll see the same within uh, standard vSwitches as well. So let me go into here. You see how that's responding to that ping there. Now what I'll do is if I go edit settings, and I'm going to change some security settings here, and we'll see what effect that has on this. So you can see there, simply by changing the security settings, suddenly I've broken my cluster. I now change those to accept. There you go. It's come through already. Now, the in fact, the only one you real need, really need, is this one here, which is MAC address changes. Um, that's a security setting that's um, very important in some situations. Um, however, it certainly does break network load balancing. Okay. Um, that's about it from me. Um, it's quite a short little video, um, but also quite important. There's a tricky little setting there that um, a few people tend to uh, to miss out, and um, it's you actually, in fact, don't need it if you're going to be doing a multicast um, IP address. Um, but unicast is far more compatible as long as you remember. That setting there. Okay, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and I hope to see you in uh, another one soon.